We all want to stay healthy and fit during our time at college, but no one wants to work out alone. How boring. Thankfully, the Colvin Center offers plenty of group fitness activities to choose from. In total, we have over 120 classes between three different sites uh, here at the Colvin Recreation Center, Santee Wellness Center, as well we offer classes at the Student Union. It might be hard to fit one of these classes into your busy schedule, but graduate assistant Melissa Mapson says it's worth it. The most important benefit is that you have someone motivating you um, to work out and to keep pushing yourself. And um, a lot of times you always complain about working out, but usually when you're in a group fitness class, you can come with your friends and you can have people to kind of work through all of it with you. And you have an instructor that's helping you make sure that you're, you've got correct form and things like that. While classes like spin, dance, and glow Zumba are popular, Fitness coordinator Preston Niesemeyer says they're always open to new class ideas. A lot of it comes through just word of mouth, surveys, when people come into our door and say, why don't you offer a class like this? Uh, we do, a, like I mentioned, we do surveys and we do have them going on right now, and that's where we get a lot of our feedback. So we do a lot of um, research looking at other schools um, to bring in new classes and see what else they have, see what's in um, other gyms and things like that. Many students think that an off-campus coffee shop is the only place to work in peace after dark. But a few places on campus, such as the Edmund Lowe Library, stay open late for all you night owls. The library offers uh, a wide variety of resources from research to the Math and Science Center upstairs to uh, study rooms where you can do different projects. Uh, computers uh, with 24-hour access for printing. The Cafe Libro is uh, open most hours of the day. Just anything you could think of that you need to utilize for school, the library has. The end of the semester means finals, final tests, final projects, final grades. While many students are buried deep in their textbooks and study guides, some students find that the precious last hours until finals are the prime opportunity to do literally anything else, whether it be Netflix, video games, or even something else productive. I either procrastinate by doing stuff that's productive, but it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. So like I find myself working on, like if I have something to do for school, I'll find myself working on like work projects or vice versa. It's not uncommon. Academic success coach Tyson Putoff says it often boils down to just one thing. In cases we see, we, we generally, uh, it generally comes down to motivation. So it's hard to get started on a project or a, an assignment or a class when you don't enjoy it. Steve Irby is passionate about the science of sound. He spent his career obsessing over making sure music sounds its best. In high school, and uh, when I was a sophomore, 1965, I started the band with some friends and played keyboard. and. Uh, I, my keyboard wasn't loud enough, and I needed a bigger speaker, and so I went to my dad. He didn't say no. He said, is it something that we could build? And I think that ignited my passion for speakers, even back before I ever knew it would be a business. An OSU alum, Irby has kept his business local, but that doesn't mean you can only find kicker speakers in Stillwater. We started getting requests from other countries, and I think, for me, that was the most surprising, just that anybody would want something built in Stillwater, Oklahoma, that started in the garage. Ashley Batchelder recently graduated with her master's degree in early childhood education. She says that the supply of educators outweighs the demand. It's pretty wide open. There's a lot of teachers leaving mid-year due to unforeseeable circumstances such as pregnancy or just off to a different state. There aren't as many applicants uh, in the state to draw from, and certainly our applicant pool has shrunk in the last um, few years, a couple years particularly. I put in maybe five applications for my first time teaching, and every single one of them called me back sort of desperately. Anna Underwood is an art teacher in Ponca City. Though she found a job quickly, she says the conditions aren't exactly ideal. I work at three schools a day. I don't get paid any extra for it besides my travel. Um, I teach 6 through 12, which is a very wide you know, age group, um, a lot more lesson planning. So how does a problem like this get fixed? Everyone agrees that our teacher retention issue is nothing short of an emergency, but nobody seems to be able to come together on how best to fix it.
I started drinking when I was 16, and I smoked a lot of marijuana, and, and I got into speed real heavy when I was playing golf. And I was about 31 or 2 when I started getting a lot of speed, methamphetamines, did some cocaine, and about died a couple of times, over OD'd, and uh, kind of a bad deal. What got you off of it? Jesus Christ. He's very open about his past, his past experiences. I felt like he was open with me to the point of me going, I can't believe he told me that. I think he was also at that point in his life where it was an open book. He realized the mistakes he had made in the past um, and was definitely on a new journey to be a better person. Getting Jennifer, when he and his wife adopted her, basically changed his life. He gave his life to Jesus. He got saved shortly after that and basically turned his life around. Everything he'd been doing, he quit doing. He looked at this tiny baby and thought, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. She weighed four pounds when I brought her home and just turned my life around. I knew I needed to be responsible for her, so I started going to church and changed my life. Greatest thing that ever happened. Mm -hmm. He sees his granddaughters frequently. Um, when it's been two days, he's like, I miss the girls. He misses his daughter. Um, he would do anything for them. They're his whole life. Well, when I went, in, I made it into the system. Uh, I went to William S. Keys. And uh, I went to work for maintenance there. I learned a lot of metal. Uh, been welding for a long time, just never as a steady job. Always as a, a, you know, kind of a side thing. But I always knew how to do it. I started working in their weld shop out there. And uh, pretty soon, I, uh, my boss out there figured out that I was good at it. We provide most of the, uh, the education as far as the hands-on, the welding experience. Uh, anything that you come in with is obviously helpful. We like to get people that have a, uh, you know, a basic general knowledge, uh, a good work ethic, and then uh, we train them up. I look at it as if you're willing to help yourself, I'll help you. You know, so uh, I do what I could or what I can to help you. So, uh, but you know, if you show me a positive attitude, uh, motivation, a willingness, and you know, you're teachable, uh, then, you know, the sky's the limit for that person. And a lot of times you don't get that in the first day or the second day. It takes a few days uh, before you, uh, you realize and see that, you know, in a person, you know. You know, I've been really lucky that people have saw me for the person that I am and not from my past. Um, I mean, it happens, you know, you hear about it all the time. I know the, the prejudice happens, the stigma happens, uh, but I've been really, really lucky in that aspect. I think just the stigma of having done what you did in the past, but, you know, your actions today are what matter and, you know, she's a great employee. They look at me for who I am and um, what I'm producing, the fruit of my life, what I'm producing, my work, you know, the, the employee that I am, not my past, not my history. You know, and so I've been really lucky in that aspect. I know I'm sure it'll come, it'll come, you know, um, one of these days, but I've been really blessed in that aspect, so.